Hello and welcome to an interview with Munson Hicks Party Supplies, one of the headlining acts, some say the headlining act, of the Land of 10,000 Streams Online Music Festival, which is a three-day live streaming event that's going to feature dozens of artists and bands from all across Minnesota um, and neighboring states that takes place March 5th through 7th um, and is sponsored by uh, the folks at Minnesota Public Radio Station The Current. Uh, my name is Anthony Erig, one of the artists performing at the festival, and joining me today are John Munson and Dylan Hicks, um, presumably co-managers of Munson Hicks Party Supplies. Is that correct? It's a very complicated. Um... <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. How are you guys? Dynamic. Doing? Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Do you prefer Tony or Anthony? Um, we're going to go with Anthony. Yeah, it's um, more professional. Yeah, yeah right. That's, yeah, yeah. We'll go with Anthony. And uh... I'll go with Dylan tonight. I was often called Dylan as a, as a child in dental offices. <laughs> you right, call Dylan me Munson. And, Munson um, and, and I'll be Anthony. Well, you guys, um, I was looking at the, the we were just talking uh, backstage um, mm -hmm. about the lineup. It's a really pretty amazing lineup, um, like dozens of artists from all kinds of genres. We have, yeah. you know, rock and we have folk and we have hip hop and we have instrumental and all kinds of things uh, in, in between. And, what are uh, some of the what are some, who are some of those acts? Um, that's a great question. Um, I should probably have that. I know uh, I saw Nerdy was one of the. Oh, yeah, I like I like yeah, him a lot. Our, our good buddy Chris Coza is going. Chris Coza is going to be. Yeah, we going to be there. Oh, Chris, him. real well. Jillian. Yeah, Nerdy's really fun. He's a great producer and writer and singer and all around her. Yeah. Also, Dylan, I don't know if you noticed, but special guest is among the uh, uh, the guests, and that special always guests. fills me with anticipation. I'm assuming <laughs> that uh, Prince. Uh, will be showing up, or or maybe like uh, the new Power Generation, or I was Bob, once Bob hoodwinked Dylan, by a Prince impersonator when I was quite young. I was, I was an adult, but a very young adult. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any very many excuses. And First Avenue raised its curtain on an off night, and I don't know what tune they started playing, but a Prince signature, and an impersonator was there performing it with a band. But there was about 15 seconds, and I was like, I, I, this is finally happening in the, the impromptu <laughs> print show that I just happened to be present for. Oh, my God. I, I actually saw Prince play First Avenue um, uh, for a set right at the time that he made the Purple, made the Purple Rain movie. Oh, yeah. And so it was, the band was just incredibly sharp, and it right. was a brutal set i mean it was the most one of the most unbelievable things i have ever seen in my life you'd know if it was prince or not you know yeah it's just like it is the he he was the real deal just, right yeah well you know, i did i want to stress that it only took a few seconds before <laughs> crestfallen but trust us folks um uh, Dylan and uh, and John here are are the real deal. We will be here, yeah. And, 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 uh, and to be, to be fair, there really is very little market for Munson Hicks impersonators, <laughs> especially during COVID. After after this festival, I, I don't know, but um, it's true. That I, could what, change. I to, what I wanted to do is is ask you guys for those yes. of you who, have, who are coming from other genres, um, maybe they uh, they they haven't seen you in this project many people especially from around the twin cities will know both of you um from your various projects and and uh bands and things that you've been in um but they they may be unfamiliar with the party mm -hmm. supplies and so i was wondering if if one or both of you could kind of give us a little bio of uh of this project where it came from how you guys got together to do it sure um well i we kind of banded it about very casually after finishing up the last Dylan Hicks record, which John produced and played on and, and sang a lot of the backing vocals. I listened to him singing backing vocals and I thought, you know, it'd almost be fun to write a bunch of songs for John to sing lead on. But we kind of backburnered that idea. And then we worked on a musical together, a, a piece of musical theater um, called Princess Pam. It was a sort of fantastical musical in which the heir apparent to the British throne goes incognito, leaves the United Kingdom, settles in Minneapolis and forms a rock band. Oh, yeah. 
I would it's, it, it was aw- it's a, just an awesome concept, and it, it, it will happen. Someone's going to steal it. Now you let it out. <laughs> yeah, now it's, now it's out there. Yeah. Well, and we're, we might get little bits and pieces of this. Could story. we mail if we, if we mail this interview to ourselves? Do we somehow get some kind of copyright protection on that? Um, but we did. We worked on it. You know, a fair amount. Um, I got a little bogged down on on working on it, but um, at least for the present. But we got a lot of pretty good songs out of it. And in the process, John would often sing the songs that I'd contributed to the show. And I really loved that process, and I think John did as well. It was, it was for me, really fun to hear the characters kind of bloom with another voice. And then I thought, you know, that's really how I write anyway. I'm usually writing in character. It was just a way kind of of making the demos, more or Mm -hmm. less. You know, it was like... uh, Yeah. It was like j- just a way to kind of get it done so we could show the people who were going to actually play those roles, okay, this is how it's supposed to go. So, yeah. you know, uh, and then, you know, listening to it, a co- several of them, it was like, it's kind of good. And for me, it was kind of like, a, 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 you know, getting jealous of somebody else singing it. And <laughs> and Dylan and I both um, have are. Still there? Oh, call lost his, oh, there we go. Am I back? You're back. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I thought I was going to have to dub you. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan's a very good looking man. I... <laughs> anyway, the long and the short of it is, um, you know, it, 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 the songs were super fun to sing and we're, we're fans of these kinds of projects uh, like Nelson Sings Newman in particular is a, a record that, that we both love where it's like a, a writer and a singer. And, and we thought this would be kind of a fun thing to try. And D- Dylan is super prolific. So he just, he just cranked out a bunch of tunes and I'm not exactly a quick study, but fast enough. So I learned them and, and, and we went and recorded them with our friends, uh, Zach Harris and Richard Medic. It's the, I gotta say, I, I, been spinning the album well spinning i guess not spinning it on my ipad but been listening to the record all week and it it's fantastic i i can hear that that nilson uh some of those influences in there i actually can hear a ton of influences um Mm -hmm. as i was listening to the different tracks but there's one in particular that i just had to ask since i got both of you here Mm -hmm. um i i went down this rabbit hole in my 20s where someone introduced me to uh um donald fagan's writing and steely dan and i kind of fell down the spiral and i I just have to ask i guess dylan maybe as the principal songwriter if it and maybe this comes from writing as more like in as a fiction writer versus a personal you know biography type of yeah. songwriter um did were you listening to 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 steely dan at all before writing this this music because i couldn't help but hear like gaucho era steely dan or even some sure. of donald's like uh, solo stuff and some yeah well i have listened to him since listened to the group and to donald fagan since i was a child i think both john and i have um i mean we weren't around when those songs were on the radio we were too young for that <laughs> but um but uh we uh, we were both fans, um, and then um, I thought that I guess the personnel seemed like they were. It was a good um, group of people to maybe try to explore some of those um, devices and um, more than three chords for sure. <laughs> um, one of the tunes, "Pennies on My Eyes," was very self consciously um, written as a sort of Steely Dan song, and I was trying to avoid a pastiche, I guess, um, but was definitely thinking, I'll do something in that mode. Then I got anxious, like, I think it's too close. We should cut it. It's too close. Um, but uh, then other people said, no, it's still, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's just tribute. And so um, the song survived. I did get a little, I do that sometimes where I, I'll try to write a song as if I were somebody or something like that. And so some of that was self-conscious the sound at all. I, and it's not, it's really coming from a place of, I don't, you don't hear that kind of stuff these days in terms of just the complexity of, of, of the, the song structure, at least in mm-hmm. pop music, you know, um, and, and, you know, lyrics that are more literary than, in, you know I mean? Uh, yeah. It, it just, it's, I, I just thought it was fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, some of it was, some of it was self-conscious and deliberate and some of it probably just comes out from really like jazz, Zach Harris being such an excellent jazz guitarist, I think that brings out an element. Yeah. Uh, Richard Medic is such a pocketed drummer who has a real uh, affinity for R and B, which we we also do. So oftentimes we bring in a tune that had kind of an R and B feel, and he 
be able to help realize that. And then with some horns here and there, um, you know, I think that a lot of, um, so that probably was just sort of like, you know, that kind of came through from the, some less, less self-consciously, but I've, I've heard other people say that a lot of the tunes remind them of that. So that's yeah. fun to hear. Um, the, 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 the good parts of it where it's just a groove. Yeah. Like no, I mean, like I'm the chops a great fan Zach on guitar. Holy moly. Um, yeah. He's a really fun guitarist. It's we, we, I, I, I was, uh, kind of teasing Dylan that we should try and get Larry Carlton to play on the record um, kind of as we're kind of conceiving it more or less and who is like a he, he was the soloist and guitarist on a lot of the Steely Dan stuff so I mean, can't can't deny that yeah we were a little bit aware of the fact that yeah this, a couple sure. of the tunes kind of sounded yeah. that way and uh I was kind of like, well, how much could it cost? You know, we should just <laughs> uh -oh. we should just write Larry Carlton and just see if he'll he'll do it. Because what else is he? What else has he got to do? You know. <laughs> um, and I'd like to say that we did call him, and it was cost prohibitive. But actually, no, we didn't call. Never him. Because Zach was just too good. Zach. There are so many great musicians here in Minneapolis that you're not you're not often compelled to to call beyond the Twin Cities. You really it's, don't. It's need really to. true. It, it, yeah, man, he's got the chops, and you're right about Richard Medic. I've heard him on a few different projects, and there is like a a groove there that is un, almost unmistakable. But also, like, there's a lot of space, mm -hmm. and, and that's something I noticed on a lot of the tracks where it wasn't just putting all the notes in, but there was a lot of room. Well, all three of these uh, players who aren't me are pr very proficient, but also very sensitive and very song um, focused, you know? So um, I really love to love chances where there's room to shine as a soloist or to bring, you know, your own part to the, to the piece. But it's also really nice that everybody's sort of a song person, you know? I mean, John's been in song groups I mean, he's been a lot of different groups, but a lot of them have been very song focused. Um, and that's, you know, so, and of course that comes through as for him as an interpreter too, you know, he, I'm giving him a set of lyrics and a melody and um, he's very focused on putting his stamp on it and interpreting it, but also understanding the song and has a real aptitude for that. So that was really fun. Yeah, John, do you have a, a, a theater background? Because when you're singing these songs, I totally buy the characters. <laughs> um, that, Man, that... that's awesome. That's nice to hear that. I do, I do not. Um, and I, 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 it's funny, though, because I get asked that more and more. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm working on another project right now, and the guy, the guy's like, "Did you, you come from a theater background at all? It's all the enunciation. It's like you really want to make sure that people can understand what the words are." And <laughs> I, I do think that comes from um, um, early, early band efforts with um, with Trip Shakespeare. Um, it, it, it was always very important to Matt that it, it, the lyrics be understandable. You know, you couldn't, you had to finish every word so that uh, the listener could tell um, what it was that uh, was, had been written. Uh, because he took enormous, Matt took enormous care in crafting the lyrics. I mean, it, it, it really uh, cared about it a lot. Um, and, and Dylan's lyrics are, are very, it's a complicated story, you know, and, and, uh, and the words are ch chosen very judiciously and carefully. And you have to honor that. You have to honor that work. If you've done any songwriting yourself, you understand that, you know, it, it, that even the little articles and conjunctions and, you know, prepositions, those are those are crucial. That's crucial information. Every every word is chosen with care. So, I, I think that's maybe where that comes from. Yeah, being able to really channel the the character is it's a unique gift, and it really comes through. I I really loved listening to that. But looking at the whole album and all the different moving parts, something I'm really curious about is is how um, you guys will be kind of arranging this as a you know in smaller ensembles or were you guys planning on performing with a, with a full band for this for this uh, 10 times? we've done a little bit of everything but for this stream we are we the four of us will play okay the four of the core four people who played you know pretty much all the basic tracks now we do have a lot of guests on the records and we can't on the record we can't have them all there but it really is nice to have all four of us together so we'll be kind of um 
distant, but we have a large enough space that Drum Richard um, occupies, so we'll be there and we'll try to get us all of ourselves in frame and play together. We have this, or I do, I have this fantasy that um, once all this COVID shit is over, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the, you know, as, as many of the ensemble that performed on the record together to do uh, one big show. You know, we had our record release, but the, our record release kind of happened in the early days of, of COVID. So it was also a streaming performance. So there's, there's, it's fun to be able to perform and, and, and everybody who's involved in 10,000 streams is super grateful to be able to do it. There's no question about it. And every stream that I've been able to do, I've been happy that I've been able to do it too. But um, I really long for audience that is there warming the room with their breath and their bodies and and you can see them responding to the music in the moment. And it'd be fun to do that as kind of a second release show with a larger ensemble, just to hear those horns and to hear those background singers in the moment. Yeah, that would that would be incredible. Right now, just the thought of being in the same room with a, with a band and an audience and that energy moving back and forth just seems like a dream. Yeah. Unless maybe we're in insane clown posse. <laughs> you know, very, very, in like a water closet. <laughs> but that might be okay. I guess they're nice guys. I guess they're nice guys. I just, I don't know their music very well. <laughs> I don't either. Um, uh, one, one, you mentioned um, the, the album uh, and, you know, having the guest artists and all those things. And I think, you know, for people who want to check out your stream, which again, by the way, Munson uh, Hicks Party Supplies will be performing on the 7th of March at 9 p.m., closing out the whole festival. Um, I would highly recommend if you're watching right now and haven't heard this, that you go out and listen to the album. And probably the best way to listen to it is to, to download the high resolution um, audio files directly from the artists uh, via their Bandcamp page. And uh, I believe um, our, uh, our Alan, link behind the scenes might have a, uh, um, a link there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, look, there it is, <laughs> rolling across the bottom. We all know we can we can go to the streaming platforms and 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 listen to some you know kind of pixelated sounding you know representation of the music. But if you want the good stuff, and believe me, I've been listening to uh, to the high res stuff. Um, you want to go to their Bandcamp uh, site and uh, and pick that up, um, and you have a few weeks to ingest the music and, mm -hmm. and just feel it. Um, and I think that will go a long way to help you appreciate uh, their show on the seventh. Thank you for that plug, Thanks, yeah. Anthony. Well, I. I, I mean it. I I'm, I love listening to music. It's it, and, uh, and I can I, tell from your background, you've got <laughs> about forty five thousand guitars behind you. In cases, I do a lot of music. I mean, I've been I've been a you know fan of both of yours for for a long time. So this is a real treat. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but uh, another thing that I had on my list of things to get to, I know um, I don't want to keep you guys too long, uh, is that you know during the pandemic you got to get really creative about music promotion. And uh, I thought you guys came up with a great idea for a video, and that was to enlist um, some other artists to put together some, uh, some artwork and animation um, for one of your songs. And uh, I'm just curious if, if uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about that video and how that came about, and then maybe we can also link to that so people can check it out. Oh, sure. Um, well, um, yeah, so... That was, I mean, I knew um, Jennifer Davis. Um, can you still see me? Yep. 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 I mean, um, I knew her, you know, a little bit before and really liked her work. And um, I guess, you know, I've reached a point where I don't really like appearing in a video too much, you know? I don't know why. But, <laughs> um, and, um, and so I thought I kind of approached her um, and then she brought in a, an animator named Josh Sunby to take her work and create animation around it. She sort of created, she creates these fantastical characters, the sort of kind of humanoid, but sort of monstrous sort of characters. And so, um, I don't know, I guess the basic thing I would say about that, my favorite thing to do with any kind of PR because I struggle to do a PR, I'm not, I don't think of it as my forte always, and I'm probably not as 
uh, vigilant as I should be. I love to make something else or ask someone else to make something else that is its own piece of art. Um, and it becomes, it all does serve to help publicity, but it's also interesting in itself. So for instance, several years ago, I wrote a novel and I made a record that accompanied that novel. And then I was able to sort of use the record as a kind of publicity for the novel. Um, and, but they were both interesting projects. So even though we didn't participate at all in making this video, uh, it was really fun to see um, their interpretation of the song. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. It seemed like a, we got a nice response to it. I think, yeah, it's really, really great. And uh, will hopefully Alan will throw a link to that in the comments so people can, the, can click on it. The, the um, I've been involved, I, I have to say I've been involved in the creation of a lot of videos and um, there's the, it's it's never an entirely comfortable process, you know what I mean? It's like you you you, you know this thing is going to be seen far and or it's going to be seen hopefully far and wide, um, and it's and it's going to represent you, but it's not really going to you're not going to have that much to say about it. It's really it's kind of out of your hands because mm -hmm. you know most bands are not video directors. But having had having worked with a number of really capable video directors, I have never been more uh, surprised and disarmed by a video that got presented because Jennifer and Josh worked, you know, um, worked on this and and didn't really. They kind of said, "Would you be comfortable with?" Um, you know, this kind of animation and, you know, being depicted in this way and was like, sure, yeah, great. And then when they submitted the video, it was like, oh my God, this is just amazing. It's so wonderfully strange. It's such a artistic uh, concept and take on the song. It, we, we both just loved it and fell in love with it immediately. It's, it's beautiful and, and uh, colorful like the record. And it seems like there's this theme from both of you I've heard of this kind of like writing for someone else and, and taking something and, and letting someone else run with it, whether it's visuals or giving John the lyrics to create the character and things like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely convinced that projects like that often become bigger than the sum of the parts. And mm. I think, uh, I really, I really think this, this record is one of those and, uh, just, I think everybody should go get it, and everybody should go to the Land of 10,000 Streams Online Music Festival, um, March 5th through 7th, and be there every day up until 9 p.m. when you should get, like, the big screen TV and uh, the popcorn and, and all those things. Because <laughs> um, 9 o'clock p.m. on the 7th, you'll get to see uh, Munson Hicks Party Supplies um, with, with a band, with, uh, with, with the four core members of the band playing. And I know it's going to be a wonderful uh, event. So I just want to thank you guys both for taking the time to do this. Yeah, and, uh, thanks for having us. Oh, it's, it's really a lot of fun and um, really excited for, uh, for, your, for your set in a few weeks. And uh, once again, folks, uh, if you're not familiar with this festival, it's a three-day festival that takes place uh, March 5th through 7th. And uh, you can stream it at landof10kstreams.com. Um, and it will also be in various places, Facebook and, and YouTube and Twitch, depending on the artist. So if you go to landof10kstreams.com, you'll be able to see kind of all the different uh, members. And maybe, Alan, if you're back there, you could show a list of, of some of the artists that are there. Because like you guys mentioned, I mean, it's... It, there's just too many, you know, for me to even um, get my Scats. head around. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of really, really great, great um, artists um, from all kinds of j different genres. And it says a lot about, you know, the scene here, not just in the Twin Cities, but greater Minnesota as well. There's, there's just so much great music and art. Be so, before we part, Anthony. Yes. May I ask John, since we have, we're talking about festivals with a lot of acts. John, can you remember a time, what was the most incongruous act that you performed before or after in, in some festival or in, in just a bill or can you think of something that was, um, <laughs> well, I was, I, I, I was recently recounting, um, kind of in the, in light of the Phoebe Bridgers, uh, appearance on Saturday night live, um, which I thought was amazing. And I'm a fan of hers. 
but um, you know, she did this um, th this her, her guitar destruction um, moment kind of uh, left some people confused and uh, and other people kind of like um, you know saying she didn't do it right or something, <laughs> and it and it called to mind um, quite a quite a number of shows at Semisonic. Um, opened for uh, or, or was on the same festival bill with Green Day and every single show Green Day completely destroyed the stage <laughs> they were the, they were the last they were the last act and I mean it was really not our thing we were we were, we'd be like we'd be in close proximity to them you know we were still on the festival site kind of putting our stuff away and then at the end it, 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 as the festival was closing down you'd hear the bass amp go over you know in spite of the fact that the roadie was trying is doing everything he possibly could to hold the thing up and then the guitar the guitar going like <laughs> like flew across the stage and then the drum set out into the crowd and then uh billy joe standing naked as the cops were rolling into the festival site and then the band would like streak literally streak off the off the stage get into their bus and drive away it just happened like <laughs> clockwork every single show it was it was i i it was it was uh it was re remarkable and <laughs> definitely incongruous with what we were trying to achieve <laughs> that you know i remember a few shows i was given as a perk a little bottle of dasani <laughs> you know, water and often you know you take the cap off take a few quick sips and then and then introduce the next song sometimes neglect to put the cap back on then maybe you're keeping time with your feet or something happens whammo that dasani tips over all of a sudden and i'm like hey <laughs> we gotta get out of here <laughs> here's the keys Get your coat. You might short out your distortion box. Yeah, you know, I'm nervous. I can't, that's, I couldn't imagine destroying that kind of destruction. Probably, some of it was probably rental gear. I, who even knows? Somebody was asking me, how much do you think that cost them every night? And and I was like, I have no idea. And I'm sure they did not care one bit. I'm the, the other band that we actually did quite a few shows with was, because it was just, just on these, my dogs are going nuts, so sorry about that. They're big Green Day um, fans. What was that band that did the song, The Nookie? They did it all for The Nookie. Limp we Biscuit. did a bunch of shows with those guys, and that was just <laughs> awful. It's just like, are they going to do that damn Nookie song again? And it's just, it's it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Don't say that. All the girls is a clash bad. of fans, too, right? I mean. Sorry about my dogs. The, the, it's a lot of action over here right now. I was saying they're big Green Day fans, and they were getting a little <laughs> right. territorial. Anthony, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm gonna sign off because John... my dogs are probably making everyone. Well, crazy. you know, this is like a great ending, just like a Green Day show or something like this. I'm sure we can expect some theatrics at the end of their performance as well. Look what I just did that Fresca can. Boom. Right, <laughs> um, thank you so much once again munson hicks party supplies um the land of Ten Thousand streams music festival they're going to be playing on march 7th at 9 p.m don't miss it it's going to be awesome there's going to be dasani on the floor at the end there's going to be can crushing um it's going to be amazing and, uh, great to see you guys take care thank, thank you Anthony.